Hi everyone, this is Dan, and this is Cyberfrog Blood Honey by All Caps Comics, uh, written and drawn by Ethan Van Skyver, colors by Kyle Ritter, uh, lettering by Somni. And you're probably wondering right here, why the hell am I reviewing Cyberfrog Blood Honey uh, again? Because uh, I have reviewed it on my channel before, and uh, the short answer is that review sucks. <laughs> so this is basically uh, a re <laughs> redo review. <laughs> And the other reason why I'm going going over it is uh, because Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet was just uh, uh, it just uh, the campaign just opened up today, uh, so sort of in celebration of it. By the way, it's doing uh, unbelievably well. Uh, it's crazy how well it's doing. Uh, and I'll leave a link down below for anybody interested in that campaign uh, on Indiegogo. Uh, but it, it's worth uh, going back and looking back at the original book. Uh, sort of uh, kind of uh, revisiting it, right? And uh, looking toward the future uh, of, I guess, uh, crowdfunded comics and independent comics. Uh, anyone who's kind of following the industry uh, can tell you that uh, comics aren't particularly hot right now, uh, especially compared to, say, their Japanese competitors. Uh, but Cyberfrog Blood Honey is a pretty interesting case. It is an independently owned comic. Uh, it was crowdfunded on Indiegogo, extremely successful, I think, in total. It did run multiple campaigns, but in total ran, uh, raised more than a million dollars, right? Just the, the franchise in and of itself. Uh, the other reason why I wanted to do a revisit is because now that I have my policy of doing uh, an art panel from every single comic or manga or uh, whatever I review... Uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting reveal when I show uh, you know how well I did copying Mr. Ethan, Ethan Van Skyver. It was actually very fascinating uh, trying to do his art and understand his art. Anyway, uh, Cyberfrog Blood Honey. So this character was created in the '90s. Uh, he was kind of an edge lord, uh, at least that's my understanding of the character. Uh, I didn't collect Cyberfrogs, so uh, I will be getting uh, a lot of the older Cyberfrogs to kind of review them as well. Uh, but my understanding from Amphibionics and others is he's a bit of a bit of a edge lord nice by the way the chromium on this is look at look at how look at how it shines it's really pretty uh, uh the character's a bit of a bit of an edge lord uh he lives in uh New Jersey or Philadelphia I know it's South Jersey Philadelphia is kind of the area that is uh, Cyberfrog's hood and uh Cyberfrog Blood Honey uh, the first part of it, it comes in three parts. First part of it is the much lauded exposition, as some people, uh, you know, have criticized it for. And uh, going back, I reread this again, and I'm not gonna lie, I actually kind of enjoyed the exposition more the second time I did it than uh, the first. I'm gonna kind of run through this. You can actually read the uh, first chapter for free on his old Indiegogo. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't need to mention this, but the art by Ethan Van Skyver and the coloring by Kyle Ritter is unreal good. <laughs> but I do kind of want to focus on story elements that are kind of fascinating. And one of it is uh, Cyberfrog. Uh, the exposition kind of explains Cyberfrog's growth as a character. Him going out to help people and finding out that people freaking hate him because, well, he's a cybernetic frog. Uh, man frog, I guess. Man robot frog. Uh, his uh, finding Heather Swain and uh, their relationship is really interesting. Uh, it's not like some Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 awful you know romance bullshit. They're just really good friends, and it's mainly because she's kind of an, a bit of an outsider, and so is he uh, for obvious reasons. And together they they both uh, they both end up uh, you know relating to each other and becoming friends that way. Like she gets the the old. Uh, tattoo right there and then uh other other relationships between uh him and his brother salamandroid my favorite character honestly by the way it really screwed up i i kind of realized i, I kind of skipped past this but salamandroid actually is kind of a loner he doesn't get to uh like he doesn't get uh powers from uh kelsen i i think that's how it's pronounced so he's kind of left on his own defend for himself it's kind of sad dude actually kind of when i reread this i was like oh man dude salamandroid kind of gets freaking fucked in this comic uh pretty sad other things that i i, I kind of wanted to mention when i look back on on rereading this uh again i kind of skipped past this i didn't really uh care too much for the clinton part uh i understood what where ethan was going with it and it, it kind of worked i just was sort of like eh, this is kind of weird but uh 
some of it, like, you get, like, this this uh, kind of fun, actually interlude while these people are getting ready. I, like, I totally missed this. This guy gets freaking stabbed. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to jump pages. A lot of people have already read Cyber Frog, so I'm not really uh, ruining a lot to most people. Uh, but, yeah, dude, some of the art, like, look at this. Look at this. Look at the detail. Like, you can't see it, but, like, there's crazy detail in there. Look at that. Can you imagine that? So these are two... Uh, 11 by 17 boards that he has to put together because I'm pretty certain Ethan Van Skyver only does traditional art. So he has to get 11 by 17 Bristol boards, put them together, and then draw this insanity right here. Oh my god. Like, good lord, the detail. And this is kind of what I found out when I was trying to do his art. Uh, I guess one of the, the, the interesting things uh, about when I, when I kind of go back and reread it even though I was kind of frustrated because it isn't technically a complete story, I kind of realized something in that uh, the first part is really uh, sort of redoing uh, exposition uh, towards towards building up this character, and it's really the the resolution is is Cyberfrog's defeat, right? Cyberfrog is def is uh, okay. Well, spoilers if you didn't know that he gets his ass kicked in the second part of the book. And then part three is more of, again, a reintroduction of the setting again, uh, this time in, in two phases. In many ways, what's sort of interesting is the, uh, it's not really uh, the old school comic book format, but it uses a lot of techniques. It really feels like a, uh, I wouldn't say like a movie, it feels like an animation piece. Like uh, three parts of like a Netflix Castlevania animation piece. And uh, when I look back on it now, I do kind of wish for more of a book that was that was structured like a complete end, right? But at the same time, I kind of see where Ethan's going with this. Again, uh, this is sort of the things that I said before about it. What I do love about it is that even though the, the lettering is kind of trippy, Ethan doesn't give up on classic storytelling techniques. Like, I love how he's, he's doing the narration box. He's not letting his art tell everything. And I, I absolutely love that for a bunch of reasons, mainly in that uh, there's this huge push by a lot of people, and I think it's misguided because I don't think any uh, writer has ever wanted, you know, ever said that you don't need visuals uh, to tell a story or any of that other stuff. But I think just having like three or four pages of just images and no text, no narration, no captions, no, no anything is a bad idea. It's a very bad idea because no matter what artwork you do, even Ethan Van Skyver, there's dead space in the artwork. Like, look at this. All of this is dead space, and Ethan uses it effectively. He does break into the art at one point, but we already know what this art is, so he's not really hiding anything. And uh, I've come to realize something. The art style is all 90s, but the storytelling is very reminiscent of the 80s. Not in the sense that he's forced into a complete structure or a classic 20-page a one shot structure, but the way that he uses he uses all of the comic book uh, storytelling techniques available to him. He doesn't exclude them just for a certain style or something like that. Like what I got out of rereading this, like honestly, is that you can call Ethan a lot of things, but lazy, absolutely not. He put ungodly work into this book, and it shows. It's absolutely freaking beautiful. And uh, when I went back through it, I actually, I actually wrote, like sat down and read this through really fast in one sitting. Uh, didn't even realize that I finished it that quickly. And I actually missed a bunch of things as I was saying that I didn't see uh, last time. Uh, I think, what was the crazy one? that I didn't, Yeah, I didn't realize uh, these were catfish uh, when I was first watching it. I think I just, I was so focused on what was going on right here. Like, see, these are two pages of just visual storytelling. Uh, and uh, if you think about it, the, the visuals are so good that you can kind of do it. Uh, though I would say if I would have done something, I would have put, you know, captions underneath here. For example, right, like uh, here, uh, system status restored, cells engaged. This is really cool, by the way. I like that he changes the lettering right here. But this is actually probably a good spot here to put captions. Like, you know, you could put right here, Cyberfrog, like... Oh my god, I gotta go find Heather, right? It kind of brings in the drama right here. And then, plus there's nothing going on at the bottom here, so you might as well do that. That's like a point of critique when I was going back and looking at this. Re regardless, this does work. 
uh, because there, this is perfect uh, visual storytelling. But here we get back into it, and he's back to talking again, right? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, God, this book is just... <sighs> I forgot how freaking beautiful this book is. Anyhow, yeah, I like uh, if you haven't gotten Cyberfrog Blood Honey, uh, it's on his eBay store. You can get it there. I'm sure there's probably maybe some other opportunities for reprints and stuff. Uh, this particular version, the Salamandroid cover, is a little bit on the rare side, though I think you can still find them on eBay. Uh, but yeah, my uh, final uh, verdict, uh, it's fu still fucking awesome. <laughs> I think a year and a half later or a year later, yeah, this book is still freaking awesome and I can't wait for Wrecked Planet. Uh, by the way, that, that's going on right now, going freaking fantastic. I'll leave a link down below for people who are interested in that. So, uh, moment of truth, how did I do? Not as bad as I thought I was going to do. So, uh, Ethan Van Skyver is kind of like Kentaro Miura for me. I love his art, but man, I was kind of like... I was tripping out when I was I was uh, getting ready to attempt this. I was looking through panels, and some panels were just absolutely so freaking insane that I was going to kill myself if I would have tried them. So I had to kind of choose my battles uh, carefully, and I decided, okay, this is a cool panel because it shows Cyberfrog. It shows a lot of Ethan's techniques, including the reflection technique that he loves doing. Uh, got all the details in here. So this is doable. I can do this. I can do this. And I don't think I did too bad. So the, the lettering here, obviously, the, the uh, dialogue boxes kind of block the rest of his, his uh, bulb. I kind of realized that so there's several mistakes in here. The biggest mistake that I have is this, the uh, other left padron uh, sort of uh, reflection. If you think about it, his head is turned to me. That, by the way, I did that too. Here his head is slightly tilted looking in that direction. Here I kind of, because... I'm always weird and I can never really copy a panel. I always kind of change it. His head it turns this way and because it turns this way, more of his chest gets revealed and his hand moves too, right? So this reflection doesn't necessarily change because his hand moves to move his, el his uh, shoulder such that this reflection still works. But this reflection doesn't make sense because his head is turned this way. So kind of a big screw up right there. The other screw up is that I inked too much. I flooded this when I should have kept uh, lines and stripes to show this. But, you know, uh, I'm not Ethan Van Skyver and not a very good artist either. So it is what it is. Uh, I thought I did pretty good for the most part. Uh, not many people are able to draw, you know, uh, well, I mean, other than the epic screw-ups right there. Anyhow, uh, that's the review. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. If you got any comments on Cyberfrog Blood Honey or uh, my art, leave it down below. And I will see you next time.